Hi, this is Dean with MaxiLift and Pro Tips. In today's edition of Pro Tips, we're going to be talking about bucket elevator trunking. In this series on bucket elevators, we're addressing all the different components, boot section, trunking, head section, and various other accessories. But today, we're talking about the trunking, the part that brings together the boot on the bottom and the head section at the top. Now, what's the importance of trunking? What is its vital purpose? Well, the main thing is to provide a, a safe and enclosed environment for that belt and buckets to travel up with product and then return down uh, to the boot and accomplish this all in a nice seamless fashion. Now, some bucket elevators have a tremendous length of trunking. Others don't have as much. I was just in a bucket elevator yesterday that's a concrete facility. The boot was down about 20 feet into the ground. It had about 20 feet of trunking up. And then from there on up almost to the top was concrete. And so the belt and buckets ran in the concrete opening all the way to the top. And then there was more trunking at the top where it connected with the head section. Most bucket elevators that you see that are out in the open, you're going to see the metal trunking. The trunking can be made out of a number of different materials. Mild steel is the most common but in corrosive applications, it could be stainless steel as well. And uh, when you have mild steel though, it could be um, with a number of different types of coatings. Could be paint, regular paint, could be powder coat, could be galvanized. Something to keep in mind if you want a galvanized bucket elevator is that it's very difficult to do a hot dip galvanize on trunking because it can actually warp the trunking and it doesn't go up straight and straight trunking is very important. So oftentimes manufacturers will use galvanized plating to make the trunk and then they will spray on a cold galvanizing to uh, finish off to cover any welds and scratches and things like that. The other important feature don't want to forget and that is that it must be straight. The bucket elevator must go up and down straight and so from the factory you can actually get the bracing pieces to be installed at the factory to make sure that they are all fitted squarely and so that as it goes up, there's no movement, there's no swaying, there's no bending back and forth. If you have a bucket elevator that's a short bucket elevator, it's not going to be quite as important. But when you have one that goes up 150, 200 feet, something like that, the belt and cups have to be able to run completely up and down without touching the sides. Now, generally, your bucket is a certain width. The belt is going to be about an inch wider, maybe a couple inches. The pulley then is going to be a little bit wider than that, maybe an inch, possibly two inches, depending on if it's one row of buckets or two rows of buckets. The trunking has to be wide enough to accommodate that with giving a little bit of room, a little leeway in there so that if it does happen to get over to the side, it doesn't touch. But you don't want it to be too large because that's just a waste of space and a waste of money to build it as well. So besides the width, you're also looking at the projection. The projection has to be far enough so that that belt doesn't touch the one side of the trunk and the buckets don't touch the other side of the trunk. So you want to make sure that that distance there is also uh, adequate as well. Now, sometimes you might see a bucket elevator that doesn't have two pieces of trunking like this. Instead, it just has one, just one big entire solid uh, shape there anyway. It's not solid. but that happens because oftentimes you might have a product that is sticky, like fertilizer, or hot, like flaked corn, or something like that, in which you want to have more room in between. If it's a sticky product, you want to have as much opportunity for anything that comes out of the buckets to just fall right back down. If you have a hot product, what you want is more opportunity for air to move around inside, and, and instead of going just all the way up. If you put a hot product on that upside of that trunking, it's going to go up like a chimney, cause condensation all inside of there. If you just have a single trunk, it's still going to do some of that, but you've got a lot more opportunity for air circulation. There's some safety features that you can have in trunking. And one of the most important safety features of trunking is that you can install pressure relief panels. Pressure relief panels are going to be sized based on the size of the trunking, and they're going to be spaced based on the height of the trunking. But the reason that you have them there is because if you have a explosion in the boot section, it's going to go up through the trunking into the head section and out into other areas through the downspouts and such. I was doing a bucket elevator inspection just a few weeks ago, came across a place where they had years ago, this was an old bucket elevator, they'd been doing maintenance on an auger that fed into the boot section. 
and uh, the, it was turned off, everything was off, but they didn't have a hot work permit because they didn't even have those back then. This is about 20 years or so. I guess they were available, but this place didn't have them. And so they were welding. The sparks went down, caused an explosion in the boot. That explosion moved up through the trunking and actually poofed it out. The explosion continued up through the head section and out through a downspout and flames came out the loadout spout. That's the only reason that saved that bucket eleva elevator from being completely destroyed. If there had been pressure relief panels on that trunking, instead of that explosion going any further, it would have just popped those panels off and the explosion would have come out. There wouldn't have been any damage, but that's not what happened. The way pressure relief panels work is that you have washers, specially designed washers that can take a certain amount of pressure before they'll give way. And so that panel will come off. So that's a very important safety feature that's available with new trunking uh, additions. Something else that you'll see with trunking is inspection doors so that you can take a look at your bucket elevator belting and the buckets. If it's a true inspection door, when you open it up, there's gonna be some steel mesh there so you can't get your hand in, but you can take a look and see how it looks. You might also have maintenance doors, which are very common on the trunking because oftentimes if you wanna replace buckets or belting, you're gonna to wanna to remove the belt and buckets through the maintenance door. So those are gonna require that you lock out the bucket elevator so that it's not possible to be running or even starting up while you're trying to do that maintenance. Sometimes people want a maintenance door on both sides of an inside trunking on the inside and the outside of it. If you have that, then the rest of the trunking of that section is gonna to have to be extremely heavy because it has to carry all that weight as well as having two inspection doors on it, uh, maintenance doors. So there's a, a lot of features with bucket elevator trunking that are important to remember and they're vital for your bucket elevator to work properly and for all the components to work safely and have a long life. A lot of things to keep in mind when it comes to bucket elevator trunking. We'd like to talk to you about that if you have any questions or if you're experiencing any issues. Get in touch with us at MaxiLift. We'd be glad to talk to you about it. This is Dean with MaxiLift and Pro Tips. Thanks for watching.